So in Black Ops Cold War, you need to earn a lot of long shots for getting the gold, diamond, and dark matter camos. I know how frustrating that can be, getting up to 50 long shots per weapon. And so in this video, I'm going to give you guys the best maps and game modes, the best class setup for this, and then finally, the best, most important tips for getting long shots really fast. So this video should definitely help you out today. And just so you guys know, if you want to check out my video with all the best long shot spots on every single map, I made that video recently, so I'll put a card for that on screen, and I have a link in the description for that if you're interested in that as well. It should help you get long shots a little bit better alongside this video. Similarly, if you need any help with any other camo guides or leveling up your weapons faster, again, I'll have links for that in the description and cards on screen, such as the camo guide playlist, leveling up weapons fast, that kind of thing. So check that out if you're interested. Very quickly, there's going to be timestamps in the description, so if you want to jump to a specific part of the video, then feel free to do so. But it would definitely be worth sticking around until the end of the video if you need long shots, as that way you can make sure you get the most out of this video and you don't miss out on any important tips. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into this long shot guide. Okay, so very quickly, getting a long shot will count when you see the long shot medal pop up on screen. It doesn't do this in hardcore modes at the moment but just so you guys know I'm gonna quickly pop up on screen the stats for the distance you need to get a long shot with each type of weapon. So for the assault rifles, LMGs and TAC rifles, it's 41 meters or more to get a long shot. For snipers, it's 51 meters. SMGs, it's 36 meters plus. Pistols, it's 25 meters or more. And then finally, shotguns is 14 meters or longer to get a long shot. And for the weapons that need long shots to get gold, you need to get 50 long shots for most of them, except for the pistols for which you need only 25. Okay, so now let's quickly look at the best game modes and maps. And then we're gonna talk about the best class setup and finally the most important tips for the video. So make sure you stick around for all of that. First of all, like we said, the modes. So hardcore is the category of modes you want to go into. The reason for this is obviously because enemies have less health in hardcore. And so it's easier to get kills, especially at those longer ranges. You know, sometimes it can be very difficult, especially in core, to kill an enemy from a long, long distance away, 50, 100 meters. It can be very difficult. With hardcore, obviously, you have to put less bullets into them because they've got less health. It just makes it easier. And so I definitely recommend it. In terms of what specific modes in hardcore, it doesn't really matter too much. But I would recommend game modes like Domination, because it kind of pushes the enemies around a bit more on the map. If you know someone's going to go towards a certain area because there's a dom point there, obviously that can help determine where you should go on the map to get the long shots. However, if it's on a map that's really good with lots of long shot spots, it might be better to go on free for all because that way there's more enemies about and it's easier to kill some of them with long shots as opposed to other modes. But generally sort of domination and then also TDM, any other modes like that would be good. So team deathmatch and domination, the main two, free for all if you're on a really good map and there's lots of different long shot spots. Obviously bear in mind that they might add other modes to hardcore in the future, in which case if there's a good mode, definitely feel free to use it. You could also go for other game modes with more players like VIP Escort or the Dirty Bomb game mode, which is kind of like a mini war zone on the map. The problem with that is obviously people often have armor on that mode, which obviously it's not hardcore and it's more difficult to get kills. So if you want to go into those bigger maps with more players in bigger game modes, that can be useful if you're good and you can find a good spot or, you know, a good class setup. But the problem is, like I say, it's core enemies have armor in certain modes as well so it makes it a bit more difficult which is why it's probably easier to stay in hardcore in those smaller modes like domination free for all team deathmatch but if you want to go into a bigger mode feel free to do that as well in terms of the maps you want to be going on to ones with long range engagements and long lines of sight and you want to be voting for those kind of maps and trying to get into them more so if you're in a terrible map back out of that lobby go into a different lobby and try and get a better map the best maps in this game currently at launch there's only eight maps so far the best ones are currently satellite armada garrison crossroads and checkmate Eight. those are the five best of the eight maps we've got but obviously when they add other ones like nuketown that should be good for long shots as well especially with weapons like shotguns pistols smgs when nuketown launches definitely that will probably be a good one for long shots as well so look out for a nuketown 24 7 weekend but as i say at the moment those are the best five that we've got in the game of those satellite is probably the best one because it's completely open it's a massive map you've got the dunes which either the enemies are on or you can shoot from to another side of the map it's really good for long shots so it's amazing for that i think in the gameplay you're seeing i got around 20 long shots and that wasn't even me re trying really hard that was just me playing a game trying to get long shots so i'll probably show you a bit of gameplay on armada as well that was quite good if you line up the spots you can also get other ones on garrison crossroads is all right and then checkmate can be really good as well so those are kind of the best maps bear in mind obviously there's lots of different good spots on every map you just might not think of them so if if you're interested in learning the best long shot spots on every map in the game currently, feel free to check out my card on screen and a link in the description for that video for the best long shot spots. You won't regret it. Okay, now let's move on to the class setup then. So in this video, I've used the assault rifle to get the long shots and I used the gunfighter wildcard to bring the total number of attachments up from five to eight. So for the optic, you can put on something like the axial arms. It's a nice sight with three times magnification. So it's a decent level of zoom, but not too much. It's got a nice clean, simple crosshair in the middle of it. But if that's too zoomed in for you or you don't like it, obviously feel free to put on another optic of your choice and you don't have to level up the 
the weapon too much to go for it, which is good. If you don't like that attachment, or if the map's quite dark, or it's difficult to see enemies on the map, you could also put on a thermal sight as well, that can be very good. So maybe either the axial arms or a thermal optic. In terms of the muzzle, I put on a suppressor to conceal the muzzle flash and also so that your shots are more silenced, the enemies can't hear them as easily and so you're less likely to be found when you're going for long shots. I've then put on a 13.7 inch takedown barrel and this increases the damage range by 150%, meaning that you do more damage at a further range so it's easier to get those long shots at a further distance, even with hardcore. For the body, I've then put on the SOF target designator and this increases the reveal distance by 60% but it only gets activated when you're aimed out of sight. It's got like a flashlight on the front. I believe it helps to see the enemies a little bit easier. Then I've put on the field agent grip for the underbarrel and this gives you less vertical and horizontal recoil, which is good, so it's more accurate. And then for the magazine, I put on the SAS mag clamp. This gives you more starting ammo and a quicker reload speed. So you're gonna have more bullets to kill with and you're less likely to come across an enemy while you're reloading. I've also put on the airborne elastic wrap for the handle and this gives you a quicker aim down sight speed. So you can quickly aim down sight to lock onto the enemies to get the kill. You also have less flinch with the weapon, so you can be more accurate, and you can also aim while you're prone, which can be useful in some circumstances. For example, if you're on top of a crate or a bus or something, and you're going prone, that could be useful as well. Finally, I've gone for the Raider Pad stock, and this gives you increased sprint to fire speed and a quicker aim walking movement speed, meaning that it's easier to sort of strafe while you aim down sight, so you're less of a target and you're less likely to die while you're trying to get long shots. Now in terms of the equipment, I've put on a stim shot for the tactical, as this obviously allows you to heal when you've taken damage because in hardcore your health doesn't regenerate. For the lethal I'd ignore it because that's going to take away from the kills you can get for long shots, so just ignore it altogether. And then for the field upgrade I'd put on the proximity mine. This can be used to cover an area behind you so you're less likely to get killed from behind while you're holding down an area and trying to get long shots. So let's say you're holding down a room and you're looking out the window. If you put the proximity mine by the doorway for example, as long as it's not too close to you, that can cover the door so that you're not going to die from behind and you can focus on getting the long shots. What about the perks then? Well for the first perk I've put on Paranoia, this allows you to hear an alert when an enemy aims at you and if they're outside of your field of view you also see that orange pulse on screen, the orange bar of light coming up at the side to show you that an enemy is looking at you and you can't see them so obviously it helps you to adjust to that by turning around and killing them if you can so you can get back to focusing on the long shots. For the second perk I've put on Scavenger, this allows you to pick up ammo from dead players, meaning that you've got more ammo and you're less likely to run out while you're going for long shots. If you don't like this you can also put on something like the Gearhead perk and this allows you to regenerate field upgrades faster so you can put down more proximity mines or whatever you want. Finally for the third perk I've put on Cold Blooded, this means that AI score streaks won't target you, player controlled score streaks won't highlight you and you'll be cold on thermal optics so you're less likely to die from score streaks and if you're going for long shots you've got a higher chance of going up against people that have thermal sight for snipers and stuff like that they'll probably be looking at you across the map at a decent range so it's gonna be harder to see them and if they've got thermal it's easier for them to see you obviously feel free to mix and match the attachments or adjust anything in the setup to your playstyle. if you don't like anything feel free to swap it out if you're using other types of weapons try and apply these tips and these types of attachments to your own weapon but if you need a specific guide on the type of long shot for example sniper long shots let me know and I'll do a video on it as soon as I can now let's quickly talk about the important tips for when you're in a game to get the long shots as fast as possible. So my first tip would be to maximize your distance and push yourself back as far as you can on the map. Obviously the enemies don't know you're going for long shots. Even if they did, it's unlikely they'd bother helping you with it. And so you need to push yourself back as far as possible because the enemies will try and run towards you and you want to push yourself back as far as you can to maximize the distance and increase the chance of getting a long shot. So let's say you're in a room and you're by the window, push yourself to the back of the room. Also don't forget that diagonal distance increases the distance for you getting long shots so what I mean by that is instead of shooting straight ahead at someone if you moved further to one side the distance between you and that person is longer because you've moved diagonally and the same principle goes where if you're high up above or down below someone again it's a further distance not just horizontally but vertically as well so try and make the horizontal and vertical distance as far away as you can from the enemy and that increases your chance of a long shot. Now if you're not sure if the kill you're going to get will count as a long shot, don't forget you can use the ping system in the game to see how far away an enemy is from you and you can do this by pressing left on the d-pad and once you do that a yellow marker is going to pop up on the screen and showing you how far away it is. So let's say you ping and it says 51 meters, you know that it's long enough for a long shot with a sniper. If an enemy comes up to that point you can shoot them. It obviously just helps in your mind to actually realize how far a long shot is. Sometimes you don't need to be back as far as you are but obviously the further back you are the higher the chance for long shot if someone comes further forward towards you. 
Next up, it's probably advisable to get to higher ground or to safe points if possible. Like I said, obviously earlier, the higher up you are compared to someone else, the further the distance you are away from them. But not only that, but also if you get to higher ground or if you're near a safe point, for example, in a corner or on a roof or something or on a crate, you're less likely to be shot by the enemy if you're less visible. And so you're more likely to survive and get more long shots. On top of this, you want to keep prone or crouched if possible as you become less exposed and you're less likely to get shot. And it's also worth remembering that you can burst fire with your weapon if you need in game. If you do this, instead of just holding down the trigger and constantly firing with an automatic weapon, if you burst with the trigger, so keep tapping it rather than holding it down to try and kill an enemy, it reduces the recoil because instead of constantly kicking up, it kicks up, then relaxes, kicks up, then relaxes. And this improves the accuracy of the weapon and you're more likely to get the kill than if you keep constantly holding it down and then the recoil kicking up even more. Or alternatively, if you know the recoil pattern of the weapon, try to counteract it by aiming a bit lower than you need to, stuff like that. It just helps to try and control that recoil so you're more accurate to get the kill. I'd also suggest aiming down sight while reloading. So if you're aiming down sight to try and kill the enemy and you need to reload, ideally do it while you're aiming down sight because it's easier to track an enemy if they walk past or see them if they're moving about and then you don't have to waste time aiming down sight afterwards. You've already aimed down sight so you don't need to bother with any of that. So definitely aim down sight while you're reloading. It makes it easier for quickly getting long shots. And my next tip is just to not worry about your KD or anything else in the game. If you need to get long shots, just focus on the long shots. Don't worry about anything else like getting more deaths than kills or anything like that. It doesn't matter. You're just here to get the long shots for the camo challenge or whatever other challenge you need to do. And once you've done that, you can go back to whatever else you're doing and worry about your KD or anything else. But for now, you're focusing on the long shot, so don't worry about anything else. My final tip would just be that if you're really struggling with long shots, it might be worth moving on to another camo challenge and then coming back to it later because the chances are if you do that, you might naturally either finish the long shot challenge or you can earn a lot more of them so there's less to do when you're not even trying to go for them. Sometimes I feel that when you're really pressured to do something, it's much more difficult. Whereas if you go to something else, not think about it, be a bit more chilled out about it, you actually might get more long shots, then there'll be less to do when you come back for it. So if you can't do them, you're really struggling, maybe come back to them at the end once you've finished all the other challenges for that weapon or whatever you're doing. So those have been all the tips for getting long shots in Black Ops Cold War. Like I said, if you haven't checked out my long shot spots video with all the best spots on every single map in Cold War, definitely check that out. It's going to be very useful for getting long shots even faster, especially with this guide. But yeah, hopefully you should have found this video useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it. It really helps me out. And feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon so that you stay up to date with all my latest Black Ops Cold War and Warzone videos. I've got tons more camo guides, challenge guides and tips and tricks videos coming out. So you don't want to be missing out on any of that. And like I say, feel free to check out any of my other camo guides. There'll be a playlist on screen and in the description and all my other videos, tips and tricks and so on and so forth. Feel free to check them out if you haven't already. But cheers for watching and hopefully I'll see you all on the next video.